Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and hey, I've got generators that I take with me to events and to, uh, you know, uh, remote operation and all sorts of stuff when I'm running radio, and I happen to have Hondas because they're really quiet, and most importantly, they're RF quiet. I can run HF, VHF, UHF, uh, MF without any noise factors coming in from the generator, which is a big, big plus if you're an amateur radio operator. Now, I happen to own two Honda uh, EU 2200Is, and I always wondered, what would it really take to convert them over to propane? Well, I have to tell you, I found out. Uh, I Looked around and I found a very reasonably priced kit from a company called Hutch Mountain. And I went ahead and installed one on one of my generators. So we're going to install the Hutch Mountain propane conversion kit to make my EU2200i a dual fuel system. So without any further... Oh! Almost forgot. Hey, if you haven't... Hit the subscribe button, will ya? Uh, subscribers really help me out in the long run and gets my videos in front of more people. Also, as always, any questions you might have, go ahead and make them down in the comments down below, and I usually try to get them answered within a couple of days. Anyway, with that, let's get to it. Hi, everybody. Stu, AG6AG, and... We're going to install a propane add-on to this Honda EU2200i. Um, I got this propane add-on, which will make this dual fuel, both gasoline or propane. Um, and I got it from a company called Hitch Mountain. Uh, these guys are uh, basically out of Utah. And uh, I got a really nice thank you letter with it uh, that actually looks like somebody took the time to write my name and a thank you and uh, wow and one of the one of the most interesting things is uh, the bottom of it where it says best to you and your family reach out with any questions we're here to help giving me a email address and a phone number okay well I did have to call them and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Uh, but, for now, let's go ahead and get started on doing this conversion. Okay, so before we get started on the mod here on the generator, I want to cover a couple quick things, because uh, understanding what you're actually doing when you're adding the propane mod helps a lot, at least for me. If I've got a general idea of what, how things work, then it's a lot easier for me to commit the time and do the labor and not be concerned about it. So, real quick, let's take a look at a carburetor. Uh, and I apologize up front, I am not a good artist at all. But what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to draw a simple carburetor. What we have here is, and let's see, and over here is the engine. Okay, we'll just put engine here. All right, this is the throttle area of the carburetor. You have a butterfly sitting in there. This butterfly opens and more air rushes in. Now, underneath this, you have what's called a float bowl. And what it really is, is it's a storage area for fuel in the carburetor. And there's actually a float that comes up, and when the fuel reaches a certain level, it shuts the fuel off going into the bowl. Uh, thus the name float bowl. Think of a toilet, all right? Now, on the bottom here, we have a stack, and in that little tube stack that's coming and goes into here, we actually have a jet orifice. And this is actually screwed in, and basically what it does is it allows fuel to be pulled up out of the float bowl and atomized in here into the carburetor to go into the engine to basically create the explosion that forces the piston down. 
the jet size is set for an ideal, they try to get as close to 14.7 to 1 parts fuel versus parts air, okay? But it's important to understand that the carburetor does atomization of the gasoline as it passes through. So by the time it gets into uh, the cylinder, it's a gas, okay? Now, when we add propane as a fuel, well, we don't need any of this stuff, right? Uh, what we really need is just a throttle body to govern how much air we're letting into the system. And we do that with our conversion by adding a what they call a fogger and there's little holes in the bottom here that open up to your propane right so again I apologize for my terrible drawing but if we're looking realistically this goes into a um, low pressure regulator which basically uh, really doesn't move anything until there's a vacuum up at the top right uh, which plugs into a high pressure regulator, which plugs into your propane tank, all right? When the throttle opens more, there's more suction here. It's pulling more air in, so it allows or draws more propane from this low pressure regulator, okay? And all this is is, again, a fogger. It is fogging the propane up in here. Now since it's already atomized because it's a gas to start with, we don't need to worry about atomization or anything else. It just goes directly into the engine and under compression spark plug lights it and kaboom you're running. A couple quick things also just to let you know if you've been searching the internet there's all sorts of people talking about oh you know two lean a mixture you're gonna burn up your engine and all that Later in the video, we're going to show you a couple things you can test and see where exactly your mixture is, okay? Uh, very, very rudimentary tests, okay? Uh, but that actually had parts, uh, parts of the phone call that I'm talking about in it, so we'll get into that, all right? Anyway, with that, hey, let's take a look at the tools and the other things that we need to get this job done. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in the kit here, okay? Um, of course, the most important thing we have is the atomizer. And this atomizer is marked with the 22. Um, I should probably cover this. They sell kits for the uh, EU2000i as well as the EU2200i. We're dealing with the 2200. This installation is different than the 2000. Theoretically, you could do some stuff to make it everything work on the 2000, but you'd need another jet, and the jet is actually inside here. Now, um, all that said, you also need to drill another hole on the 2000, tap into the electrical system, so it's a little bit more involved, but not that much. Um, and again, I've got the 2200, so that's what you're going to see today. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there are other videos out there for the 2000. Anyway, so this is the basically the uh, fogger right here. This is what's going to go in front of the carburetor between the carburetor and the air cleaner on the Honda. And this is going to go up through the top of the uh, generator. And here's all the stuff to attach all that and get that all put in place. Um, and of course, brand new gaskets for it and a tie wrap to secure this hose, all right? Also over here, believe it or not, is stickers, right? These stickers are here so you can change it on the side of the generator. All that said, we'll get into that. Um, oh, there is one more part to this. Now these are all the parts that you're going to be using to put it together. And of course, guess what? The manual, okay? The installation manual. Do me a favor, open this thing up, read it. Read it all the way through. Just make sure you understand all the processes uh, and what order they need to be done in and things like that. Yes, I'm going to show you how to do it, but 
there's nothing like reading the manual to be sure that you know how it needs to be done. Okay? So, there is one last piece. Now, this is all the stuff I've got to put into the generator. But this right here is the piece that actually goes on the tank, okay, the propane tank. So you have your high pressure regulator here, you've got your low pressure regulator here, and your hose with a quick connect to attach to the generator. All right, so let's take a look at the tools that we need. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the tools we're going to need to do this, okay? We are going to need a couple crescent wrenches, okay? Uh, now, optional, I have a three-quarter inch and a five-eighths inch wrench. Uh, I like tightening things with real wrenches. That's my thing. Uh, I just feel I have more control over what I'm doing. So uh, you don't have to do, have these to do the job. For me, it made it easier, okay? It just makes it easier. I have a standard Phillips screwdriver, number two. I have a ruler to do measuring for the hole. I have a 5 16 nut driver. This is optional. I have a 5 16 socket with a short extension on a ratchet. You're going to use this to torque everything back down and, of course, take everything apart. Okay? And I say everything. You're going to be loosening and removing three bolts, well, two nuts and a bolt, and then you'll be putting them back. Okay, after you've completed the uh, project. Now, we also have tape. Now, I use tape. This is optional. I use tape to mark where I'm drilling holes. It just, it's an old habit. It keeps me from, uh, you know, scratching up the whatever I'm working on and stuff like that. It, it probably isn't a necessity, uh, but that's the way I like to do it. You're going to want a flashlight. Big, small, doesn't matter. It just needs to work. And then the most important tool of all, you want a fire extinguisher around. Why? Well, you probably have gasoline in your generator. And if something goes wrong, you could have a fire. Okay? Uh, that can happen. Whenever you're operating your generator, you should have a fire extinguisher nearby anyway. All right? Now, where do we put our fire extinguisher? You want to put it a distance away from where you're working so you're not in the fire when you're looking for the fire extinguisher. Uh, in my office here, there is one escape route, so that's where I'm putting my fire extinguisher, is where that escape route is. All right? Let's see. Um, oh, and the other very important tool, again, is a manual. This is your reference. You want to have this around while you're working. All right? All right. So with that, I guess we're going to get started. All right, so let's get started. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver. Remove the service cover here. If uh, I'm sure if you own one of these, you know about this panel. This is where you check your oil. This is where you change your air filter. That's basically the whole kit and caboodle right there. Now, couple of things I want to do first off, okay? Um, I've ran this thing out of gas by turning the fuel off but leave it run until the float bowl goes empty. I want to make sure I do this before I get started on it, all right? Uh, there is gas in the gas tank, but I do have the gas valve shut off as well. So uh, there should be no gas in the carburetor. And by the way, when you shut your generator off at the end of a trip or the end of a uh, event, you really, really want to make sure that you empty that float bowl. If you don't empty the float bowl, what will happen is the carburetor will get gummed up. And if the carburetor gets gummed up, either you got to take it apart and clean the jet or you got to take it in and pay somebody else. So, uh, again, just keep all that stuff in mind. All right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this surface up here is clean. And I'm going to put some tape on, like I said. And I like painter's tape. It works really well. It really does. Uh, there we go. All right. Now 
it's going to go there. And I'm going to need to, let me estimate here, because I'm going to need some more tape, I am sure. So I'm going to make a little indent here. And actually what I'll do is I'll just kind of cut it there so I can see where that line is, because that's my measure point. And here, let's see, so here it's going to be uh, four and three quarter, which is right about there. I'm going to... I'm going to just pop another piece of tape right over here. We'll tuck it here and down there, like so, and then I'll just loop it down a little bit. All right, so there we go. Now, let me change my camera angle so you can see my measurements and uh, cutting and all that. Alright, so I'm going to grab my installation guide. There it is. Try to put it in a fashion that you can read it. It's kind of crooked. But we are doing this, and we are going to have a hole drilled here. There is another place for a hole if I was doing a 2000. That would be to install a switch, but we're not. Uh, but the rules would be the same. All the measurements would be the same. All the things that you're doing. So in here, it says that I come from this point here, where the cowling meets the case, and I go in four and three quarter inches, and then I come three quarter inches from this lip here back in. So let's see if we can do that. Now zoom in a little. See if you can see what I'm doing. All right. So let's see how I do here. So probably, oh, probably I just want to get a general idea to start with uh, where I'm going. I'm going to kind of do this backwards. So there I am at the quarter right there. That's four and a quarter there. And we'll make a line right there. And then I want to come in here three quarters. From here, which is right there, and there's my drill point. So, oops, sorry about that. Yeah, shaky, shaky, huh? And I'm also touching the table, so I'm going to move out just a little bit because we're going to drill. Now, before I drill, I want to make sure that there is nothing behind where I'm drilling in here, right? Because I'm drilling through this, and I have to tell you that it concerns me. But... I look, and it looks pretty good, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a little bit, and then I'm going to see with my flashlight where it is. Now, you're not going to get to see all this. I'm sorry, but trust me, I'm looking. All right, so I place this on my X, just like that. Okay, interestingly enough, you see this stuff? Yeah, I'll hold a piece up. See that? I don't want to get, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. I don't want to get that down or allow that to go down in my, uh, in my thing here, right? A little bit's going to come down. I just got to make sure I, I probably am going to want to vacuum this unless I'm sure that I've caught all of what I've got. So now I'm going to use my flashlight. I'm going to stick the drill bit in there, and I'm just going to look and see where I'm coming down. And I can go a little farther. Oh, you know, let me show you this. I didn't show you this earlier. See that tape? That's his, that is the size I want the hole to be. The hole is supposed to be 9 sixteenths, okay? So uh, here we go. And you know what? I'm looking really good here. I am. So let me get that off of there, get that. I've got lots of clearance, so I'm going to be good going all the way down to my, my 9 16 mark here. Okay. So, ah, 
I had a little plastic wrapped around here. I'm just cleaning the bit off. And we'll show you what we got when I'm done. All right. Let's go ahead and take it home. Okay. So, that should be that. So what am I going to do now? Well, I am going to confirm that my hose fits, right? So I'm just going to go in here and go like this and go, there we are, perfect fit. We're set to go. All right, time to back away and start taking some stuff apart. All right, so let's start our disassembly here. I pulled off the frog tape. Now... I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver here, I'm going to put it right here on the air cleaner and I'm just going to unscrew it. There it is. I'm going to set this off to the side. Now, I'm going to pull out this portion of the air cleaner, set it over here, and inside here is that 5 16 bolt. And I'm going to clean up all of this stuff. I got spread all over the place, right? This is all the remnants, and I've got all the remnants out of the inside here. So we're good with that. All right. So I'm going to start with my 5 16 ratchet. Make sure it's set to loosen. There we go. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And I'm just going to loosen this, like so. I'm going to loosen these, like so. Now I'm going to do the rest of it with the nut driver. We'll pull this bolt out, right here. Then we're going to pull these two nuts off, like so. set them over here and then the whole air cleaner assembly now will just wiggle right off but there is a hose down here connected to the air cleaner so I'm going to put some forward pressure on this so it's not jiggling anything and we're going to pull down on this hose hopefully there it goes and just take it off and then here we go with this and this pops right out just like that Now, with that loose, we can now pop out our gasket here, like so. This gasket I'll put away for a rainy day, but for right now, we don't need it, because we've got two brand new ones. All right, so I am going to try to adjust the shot to what I'm actually going to be doing, which should be interesting. I'm going to bring the shot up a little bit. Something I want to show, though, before we get too far in this, is this. Whoop. And this, got to get it where you can actually see it. This is the piece that goes on here. And I want to make sure that I kind of figure out a way to make sure I'm lined up. I don't want to like put the thing in where this thing's going to be upside down. So the bend actually in this is absolutely perfect for that. So again, if I look, I've got a big slot here. I've got a little slot here. I've got the two holes. Those are going to line up perfectly with the inlet of the carburetor. All right. So let me get back to adjusting the shot. Okay. Now, I need oh, let me swing this. Sorry guys, I want to make sure that we get this in one, uh, one shot because it's really hard to redo. Alright, so I've got two washers. I've got this. And I've got this 90 degree here. So what I do 
is, first off, I need to go behind these fuel lines, like so. Just up behind the fuel lines, like that. See that? Behind the fuel lines. I'm going to put one washer on there. Then I'm going to muscle this on up into position. Really isn't a muscle, it's just more or less just trying to get it in there and in so it's straight. That's the other issue because we're going to need to basically tighten this up as easily as possible. All right, I've got that. I put on my other washer. I attach this like so, get it started. Now, now the fun part, I got to tighten this. So I'll let you in on a secret. This thing's really hard to tighten, okay? That's why I want to use wrenches. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my wrenches, and you know what? These are both 5 eighths. Both of these fittings are 5 eighths. And um, so, in essence, I lied to you at the beginning of the video of the two wrench sizes. It's not 5 eighths and 3 quarter, two 5 eighths. Okay, just for reference. Um, but again, you can use a crescent wrench if you want. All right, so from here, we're going to just start tightening this up. I'm going to bend this back a little so I've got some clearance to start with. There we go. And this is a long process, actually. So I'll probably fast forward this. Okay, so now that's tight. So something we want to do here as well, we need to bring this hose up like this so it's not rubbing against anything. They give us, for that, a tie wrap. Now since I haven't really hammered against one of these yet, one of these installs yet, there's a part of me that's a little unsure that um, this tie wrap is really a good idea. I want to bring this down now so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. But they are adamant that they want this on here. And my assumption is that it probably is to keep things from shifting around and rubbing, causing the, you know, the fuel line or the fuel hose to get worn by the uh, uh, gas hose. I'm just going to twist this down just a little bit, give me a little bit better shot here. So what I'm actually supposed to do, according to the instructions, is make sure that I do this tie wrap on the other side of the um, on the other side of the uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Hose clamp. On the other side of the hose clamp here. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to snug it up. And there we go. All right, so that's now there. Now, we're almost done. Let me give you a better look at that tie strap. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, like I said, I'm finding angles here, but yeah, you see the tie strap there now? Alright, so we have the tie strap in place. I'm going to pan up. 
We've got the 90 on there. That's permanently attached. We have our hose coming around. Let me back all this out. Where we see everything. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to attach the quick release valve to the top. And, oh, let me flip this around. Quick release valve right here. And that is going to screw on just like that. And gee, I wonder. No, of course not. This is what I need a crescent wrench because without it, I can't tighten this. So it's very important, you know, the only thing that's really holding this in place are uh, two washers. I'm going to pop this out so it's not spinning around. Two washers and the fittings right here. So I'm going to kind of tighten this till it's semi-snug like that. And then I'm going to get a backing wrench on this so I'm not putting pressure on that portion of it. And again, I need to get this tight because this is a gas seal. And very important, I've got the backing wrench there, right? And this does, this whole thing vibrates, you know, it's pretty smooth running. Okay, I'm good with that. That feels good. You want it tight, but not over tight. We'll put that cover back in. All right, we're down to the nitty gritty now. We get to use our washers. All right, or excuse me, our gaskets. All right. So now, I'm going to back off a little bit here. So I want you to see everything I'm trying to do here. So, now i got to pull these two hoses up, and they're just pushed in down at the bottom. And I need to stick this back behind them, like so, and push them back down in here. These are basically just fuel bowl uh, uh, releases. So if the fuel gets too high, it will basically drain. And you have a drain screw right here, so if you have to use that, that will allow you to drain it. Okay, and it will drain right out the bottom through that hose. Again, I've got these washers. I have to look at them, to, or I keep calling them washers. I apologize. These are gaskets, and I have to make sure that I do get them on properly here. So I have one there, and I have one here. Okay, so now that I have the washer on, I'll put this on, like so. And then I'll put on my other washer, making sure I got the big hole to the left, right? The big slot. Now comes the fun part, right? What is the fun part? Well, <laughs> the fun part is I need to get the air cleaner on now. So. There is, on this air cleaner, there is a little bushing in here. And I'm going to, they say use a screwdriver, but I just take my finger and it's got a little area on the back. And I can just pull this out without any problem. And they give me, in my bag with my jets and my stickers a new bushing and it just the bushing is, is basically more of a spacer right because we're adding distance between the air cleaner and the generator all right so first things first or first things last depending on how you look at it 
And by the way, here's that bushing. I'm just going to put it on here. First things first, I'm going to get my nuts on that hold the whole carburetor assembly together. And there's something very interesting about this. Well, maybe not interesting. Uh, this one on the bottom here, on the air cleaner side itself, goes on fairly easy. Um, well, I say fairly easy. There is enough threads to grab it, and I can nose it a little just to make sure it's in there. This one, so Honda's design is, this is actually a bolt that comes all the way out from the back. So, really, the only way that you're going to get the nut on is to pull it out and then push this sideways slightly from the hose itself, the gas hose, to kind of hold it in a position where it's out a little bit. If you don't do that, it's going to keep pushing in on you. You'll never get it. So, I'm going to use the nut driver here, and I'm just going to snug these. Okay, I'm just snugging them. Right? Just snugging them, you know, and it looks like I'm turning them. I'm actually letting the tool slip in my hand a little bit. All right, that's a good start. Now I can take the bolt with the new spacer on it. I can line it up here. Did I actually get it? Now I'm not thread threaded here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so now I'm threaded. I can go ahead and tighten this up. There we go. And this, you know, again, I'm just going to get snug with my nut driver, right? And we've gone from a metal bushing to a plastic bushing, so I don't want to overdo this. Now, for these, it says 22 inch-pounds of torque. I worked in garages for a long period of my life, so I'm not saying that I can feel 22 inches of torque, but I can get pretty close. And what I'm looking for as I alternate these is I'm looking for the proper resistance that I should feel. Now, after I run this for a while, it's very important. Remember how small these are, right? You don't want to break them. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good with that. I'm going to zoom in on this. Let me just hit this once with the ratchet. Once or twice. Just to... and I am, I'm going to call that in there. I'm going to zoom in on these. Or try to. So I want to show something that uh, could be something that might alarm people. Uh, Alright, let it focus. Okay, so if you look here, what you're going to see is you're going to see that the nuts only go down about halfway on these bolts, okay? I talked to the manufacturer about it and everything else, and uh, we both agreed that, yeah, there's probably, based on uh, what it's holding together, that's probably more than enough of a fastener on there. To work. That said, um, you can always rip the entire thing apart to change those bolts. Okay, so let's back this back up, get a better look at the entire unit. So we're at our finishing stages here, right? This is all back together. We're going to put in our bottom oil filter there. So what happens is air comes up from here and any big particles or whatever are caught in this oil, kind of oil soaked foam. This right here is the main air filter. Okay. So now I just set this on here. I grab my screwdriver and this is a quick attach right there. And, you know, while I'm in here, probably be a good idea, I'm going to check my oil, make sure my oil's full. 
and looks good. All right. Okay, and I'm going to take a pair of dikes. You do this with a pocket knife. You do it with anything. The dikes are probably the best. And just cut that off. All right. So, we're ready for the side. And then guess what, kids? We're ready to take this outside and give it a run. So, I just wanted to reiterate a couple of small things here. Um, thing number one is I want to make sure that I do a complete inspection. Make sure nothing's rubbing, nothing's going to, you know, get messed up here. All my hoses are back on, including my uh, air cleaner hose, okay? Very important that I do that inspection. Now, it's set for a minute or so. Yeah, more like a half an hour. I'm just going to verify very gingerly that these are tight because, you know, stuff changes as far as that goes. But they feel fine, okay? And now, again, let's put the cover on and let's take it outside and fire it up on propane. Well, okay, we're going to make this happen. This is the first time we're going to fire this up. So step one, I want to turn my propane on. Step two. You will be modifying a 2000 to have a power switch here. But on the 2200, you would just barely move it up to where you hear a click. And the fuel now is off, but the magnetos are on. So with that, we're going to go ahead and start. And I'm supposed to hold the push button on the back here for a half second. That primes it. Now I'm going to pull this three times. And there we go. So, we're told that it might run a little rough. Um, until all the fuel gets out of it. But what we're going to do is we're going to let it run for about five minutes so it gets warm and see how it idles. Uh, right now we've got a little bit of pop and surge, but it's not terrible. It is cold. So let's take a look at this in five minutes. All right, so it's running a little rough, but... I got some information when I called, and by the way, when I called Hitch, it was amazing. These guys were so helpful. Um, anyway, they gave me a suggestion to test some stuff. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to reach down here, and I'm putting it in econ mode. The first test that you want to do to see if it's a mixture issue is put it in econ mode. Econ mode, smooth. All right. Now, the question is though, is it running that way because it's rich or it's lean? So we're going to put it back on ball. And I'm going to walk over to the spark plug access. And I'm going to pop it open. You notice it cleaned up. So, opening this little pop right there allows more air into the generator, into the container. So, if I put this bit back on, yeah, it's starting to run rough again. 
So what that tells me is it's a little too rich. But rich is not a bad thing, okay? We can adjust that out or whatever. Um, but the problem that we run into with that is if we go too lean, that's when we can damage our engine. Another test, very important. There's no load on this generator. So I'm gonna take my heat gun a load on it. All right, I have a low load here, about 400 watts. Let's give it a real load. You know, that's about 13, 1400 watts. That's pretty good. There it goes, back to Rick. Using the Eco, that's the low, there's the high, that's our Eco. That's off again. So, depending on, oh, and let's go ahead and shut her off. If we do that, by turning off our propane. And there we go. I'll reach down, turn the magnetos off. And you know what? I'm going to continue this from a nice cozy chair. Well, there you go. Um, you know, Hutch Mountain, I'm very happy with their product. Okay. Uh, they didn't give me any discount. They didn't know I did videos or anything about me. I just was another online order to them. And uh, when I called about the uh, surging, right at full RPM, um, somebody answered the phone. Somebody that knew what they were talking about answered all my questions. When I, uh, you know, I casually asked, oh, and you know, I was a little concerned about, you know, the length of the uh, uh, the bolts, the backing, and he's, no worries, that's more than enough to hold it together. Uh, and I agree with them, you know, I, I was in auto repair for a while, uh, but Again, it was comforting to have him also explain to me the same justification that I had in my own mind. Um, anyway, with that, uh, he also went into depth on how I can adjust the mixture and the proper way to do it and everything else and how I could uh, field adjust it if I changed altitudes where I didn't have to change the jet. And uh, just about every single question I had, he was willing to answer. So... I cannot recommend Hutch Mountain enough, okay? Uh, make sure you buy direct from them. Don't go through a reseller. But uh, anyway, with that, I'm happy. I have dual fuel Hondas now. And you can too. Anyway, hey, that's all I got today. My name's Stu, AG60AG. And I just want to say 73 to everybody out there and Hope to hear you on the air.